Then I met his friend and I say, uh, where is Peter? And he said, oh, you didn't know? He said, he's in Austria. In the meantime, a few days later, I got his postcard. Vse nazajka ni bilo dobro od moje strani. Pa ti sedaj pošiljam Dunajsko razglednico in se zmisli kaj na mene. And we started climbing the mountains and my sister started to get tired. She said, I want to rest. I said, a little longer and then we're going to be probably safe. We go. But then the rain started, the snow started falling and she was tired. I can't go anymore. I have to rest. I said, okay, just let's go behind the bushes and we're going to have lunch and then we go ahead. So we did all that. We started going ahead. And behind us, somebody make a noise with a machine gun, stop or I'll shoot. We were flying a mission and uh, all of a sudden we saw something whiz by. What in the world was that? And we decided it didn't have a propeller on it. We had never seen a jet aircraft before. So we thought if they had gotten that plane into production a year sooner, then it might have been a completely different story because we couldn't have stood up to that kind of a fighter. They were just too fast for us. She didn't speak a word of English. We didn't speak a word of Italian. And we hadn't met this woman before. My father brought her home one day and said, this is your new mother. And right about that time, we had uh, uh, come around and we were on a broad reach and looked up to the west and you could see just an angry, angry lip of a squall line coming across and uh, Rufford capsized. This was cold water, this was in May. Jack's kind of a quiet man, but there is a strength in him that Jack finally reached out and touched Rufford on the forearm and said, Rufford, get dried off and go home. <laughs> and Rufford kind of stiffened almost to attention and said, you're right and marched off to his car to get his dry clothes. <laughs> there was more colorful language than that. <laughs> Since we found out that we had such a noted uh, third cousin, uh, William Goble, it started us on the trail of who are our ancestors. My great aunt Jewel used to spend weeks with us visiting and she said that she had a cousin that uh, had been the first Democratic governor of Kentucky and that uh, he was assassinated on his first day at work. A Yankee and a reformer in a southern state, Goebel spends his political career trying to overthrow the monopoly of the Louisville and Nashville Railroad and the tyranny of bitter ex-Confederates. On a cold morning in January 1900, despite many rumored threats to his safety, William Goebel climbs the Capitol steps to begin his term as governor and is shot from behind. I had him not tell his mother that we were looking at rings because I knew she wasn't going to let her boy go. <laughs> And we had gone together for three and a half years before we were engaged. And his mother said, what's all the rush? And then we told my mother and father, they said, get out the wine, let's have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Two different reactions. <laughs> you have to have a sense of humor. Really and truly you do, but he does have a sense of humor. Most people only know his serious side, but he can be a lot of fun. <laughs> what she's saying about me is strictly prejudiced. <laughs> you put that string and the gum down there and kind of fish around with it. Pretty soon you'd feel a kind of a bite on it. And we'd bring the, bring the string up slowly and sure enough there'd be a tarantula on the end of that gum. And we'd uh, take it and, and put it in a, a, what we call a mason jar, glass jar, put the lid on it and pretty soon we'd have two or three of those tarantulas. And we'd put them in that jar and let them fight. Moving in the house was tough because we're, there's a lot to do when you move into a new house. Plus the fact 
I was a dirt farmer at heart. We, we ran quite a farm for a number of years, and it was fun. Raising the four boys was challenging, but very rewarding. And uh, like I said, my brother and myself, we were always singing. He had his song and I have mine and we sing together. Mine was Que Sera Sera. That was my favorite song. Do I remember my first kiss? Oh my God, yes I do. <laughs> we got to the bridge, he wanted to kiss me. I was fighting, I was so tired, I didn't want to have a kiss. I didn't want a kiss from that guy. <laughs> and he was fighting me and holding my hand so tight, I was all uh, red and black and blue, and I was fighting. And finally, he won, he gave me a kiss. <laughs> and I pulled out a bang, <laughs> I hit him. The, the thing I got, the greatest amount of good feeling about, certainly by the time I retired, was the uh, respect and admiration that I received from the people that worked for me or in my organizations. I mean, even to this day, uh, that seems to be true. The, the lady who works here in moving people into Maris Grove said to me about six months ago, I met one of the engineers that used to work for you and he's going to be moving here. And she couldn't remember his name. And I said, well, you know, when's he coming here? She said, I don't know, but he's he told me that you were the best person he ever worked for in his whole career with DuPont. That's rewarding, you know, it's, it's from here. Probably running out of either belly or uh, space on his shirt or something, but we'll take care of that somehow. But I'm so pleased that I have 14 little kids that came out of our marriage. <laughs> Boy. What a blessing. And they are truly a blessing from God. It's a gift from God that you get all of these descendants because you didn't strangle your, ch your teenagers. <laughs> I'm uh, now living in a retirement place and uh, I find myself going to all the meetings for the different and new things that are coming up and I just don't like sitting and not doing anything. For my sixth birthday, my mother gave me a pair of roller skates and she looked at me and she said, I want you to go out and enjoy these skates and I want you to play all the sports that you wish to. And she said, because I was never allowed to. So I never got that speech. And uh, whenever I was maybe biting off more than I could chew, I would think of my mother saying, I want you to try everything. So I think I did. <laughs>